All right, so I'm kind of out of town, back home for a couple of days on kind of like a mini vacation. Um, I've also got some fights that I'm going to be covering, and in the meantime, um, staying over at my best friends for the weekend. Uh, but I got word that the uh, Atlanta Falcons are not willing to negotiate a new deal with Julio Jones, and I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of – open arms about this really for basically no reason uh look julio jones still has a contract that goes through 2020 and i i know that he decided to sit out hoping that he was going to get a new deal and all this kind of stuff but uh he still got third year i believe of a 71 million dollar contract it's not exactly like julio jones was hurting I think that what we are seeing is a trend that has began um, that I don't think is necessarily beneficiary to athletes, and that is they are deciding to sit out a year or two year. They're not attending OTAs or scrimmages or practices or you know camps, whatever the case is, because they want to get a new deal now. They want to get it done now. I understand their plight. They want to make sure that they're taking care of all those kinds of things right away. Otherwise, they can go and make themselves – um, available to other teams, whatever the case may be. I, I think a big part of it also may have to do with the fact that you're giving a hundred plus million dollars to a Matt Ryan, to a, a Jimmy Garoppolo, to all these guys. Some of them unproven, obviously, like Garoppolo. Some of them kind of proven, like a Matt Ryan. Um, for me, I, I think that the mistake that is being made is expecting a new deal so soon. Uh, they've already said that they're going to negotiate with him after the 2018 season. He'll still have two years left on his contract from there. I don't necessarily know why Julio would decide that he needs one now. It's a trend that continues to happen. Look, I, I've always said that I believe that a player should be in charge of their own career, and I stand by that 100%. I really do. That's what guys like Oscar Robinson you know, in basketball fought for with the NBA. That's what um, all the strikes were about in the NFL back in the, in the early 80s with Dan Marino and all those guys you know, creating unions and a, and a better lifestyle for football players before, during, and after their time is done. And I don't take any issue with that. What I do take issue with is I, you know, you know, so 2020 in 2019, pull that move. You know, uh, I think it's too early to pull the trigger. I think it's too easy for everybody to freak out. And if they can't get a deal done, then obviously you have to look at Matt Ryan and go, well, they're paying Matt Ryan a substantial amount of money. So, of course, how can they any longer afford to keep a guy like a Julio Jones around, regardless of how great he is to the team or what he means or any of those things? It doesn't really matter after a while. What becomes apparent is that the quarterback is seen as the – uh, most valuable asset to a team that always has been that way. It always will be that way regardless. And that's where we stand. I'm Drew Duncan, host of the Full Court Press. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at DrewDuncan83. And if you want to let me know what you think, not only about uh, Julio Jones and some of the things that I brought up, but about the uh, the hair this morning. Uh, you know, I was hanging out last night, man. And uh, now we're actually about to do some housework. So... As always, don't you dare touch that dial.